Hey, what's up guys? This is Neil Reyes and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Minute. Today we're continuing our series on the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit and today we're studying the fruit of kindness. Get ready! Today's message that we're speaking about is called kindness fruit. Again, today's topic we're speaking about is called kindness fruit. Right now we're studying the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. And while we're covering the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, we're covering today's topic is going to be the fruit of kindness. One of the things we've been talking about is that the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit are the fruits that as a mature believer, you're to grow to display. You know, one of the examples we've been using is that if you were walking down your block, let's say tomorrow morning you decided to get up and go for a walk with your dog or just go for a walk around your neighborhood. If you're walking out and you see a fruit tree in the front of your neighbor's yard, you should be able to identify what kind of tree that is by the fruit it's displaying. Well, one of the things that tells us in the word is that we're to judge a tree by its fruit. So the world is constantly looking at us as believers to see what kind of fruit we're displaying. We're displaying Christian fruit. Are we displaying believer fruit? Are we displaying, you know, secular fruit? Are we displaying hypocrite fruit? What kind of fruit are we displaying? In other words, when they look at you and they size you up by the fruit that's displayed upon you, what kind of fruit are they seeing? Are they seeing joy fruit on you? Are they seeing kindness fruit on you, love fruit, peace fruit, patience fruit? What kind of fruit do they see on you? Well, as believers, the way we display our fruit, obviously we don't walk around with fruit hanging off us, <laughs> but the way we display our fruit is how we respond to situations or circumstances. You know, one of the things I talked about in our previous study on patience was that some of the strongest believers you will encounter are the ones that you can't tell ever go through anything. Why? Because they're not emotionally led. They're not led by their emotions or their feelings. In other words, those aren't believers that necessarily have reached a spot in their life where nothing ever happens to them. Those are believers that when things do happen to or around them, you can't tell because they've cultivated these fruits of the Spirit that we're talking about, especially the fruit of patience. They've cultivated the fruit of patience to where they're aggressively resting in the Lord, waiting for Him to fulfill or to answer what they've prayed about. Well, today we're talking about the fruit of kindness. I'm going to tell you that the fruit of kindness, what this fruit is, the act of operating in this fruit, is when you grow to a point where you're able to place others or the needs of others before yourself. I will also tell you that one of the greatest acts of this fruit is when you operate in mercy towards others or when you operate where in a point where you share mercy towards others or show mercy towards others. I will tell you that out of all the fruits of the Holy Spirit, they're all extremely important. But this fruit right here has one of the greatest witnessing tools you can use to the world. Now, one of the things we talked about previously with the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit were that those gifts that operate usually don't operate one at a time. They're usually several gifts operating to support each other. I'm going to tell you the nine fruits of the Spirit that we're studying now are much the same. Usually when you're operating in one of these fruits or displaying one of these fruits, you usually have several fruits that are operating at the same time. These aren't fruits you just put on and take off. These are fruits that you put on and you wear them like a garment that never comes off. In other words, you know, you wear them. In fact, one of the things we've studied before is the armor of God that's found in Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10. And it talks about the pieces of armor you place on you. And I've explained you're never to take that armor off. Well, the fruit of the Spirit is the same thing. It's a different type of garment that you put on that you never take off. This witnessing tool right here of kindness has one of the single most powerful acts to reach the world. And here's why. When you show kindness towards others, and let me say, there are many people in this world who are nice, whether believer or non-believer, doesn't matter. There are a lot of nice people within this world. However, to show kindness that's a fruit of the Spirit. I'm not saying that people can't show kindness if they're not a believer. Obviously, they can. But true kindness operates through love. And it's a fruit of the Spirit. And as a believer, when we show kindness towards others, it shows them mercy. It shows them love. 
and it opens the door for repentance within their life. You know, if they've never made Jesus their Lord and Savior, it opens the door because they want to know what Jesus is. Otherwise, if they already know the Lord, but maybe they're slipping in their walk a little bit, it shows them kindness and it shows that, hey, even though the world tells you that they don't approve of you, even though the world wants to tell you how bad you are, kindness says Jesus accepts you. Kindness says Jesus shows mercy towards you. Kindness says that no matter what you've done wrong, there's always love saved up for you in the Jesus tank. <laughs> and what I mean by the Jesus tank is Jesus always shows kindness towards people. You know, Jesus was never rude towards people. He was never mean towards people. There were times he operated in boldness when he was giving instruction. But Jesus always operated in love and always showed kindness. As believers, when people look at us and they see the fruit that you're wearing or the clothing as a believer that you're wearing, one of the fruits that they should always see on you is the fruit of kindness. I want to take you to our foundation scripture and I'm going to read you a couple of scriptures real quick to support this. The first one's found in Galatians 5. This is going to be out of uh, verses 22 through 23. So Galatians 5 verses 22 through 23. Let's read. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Long-suffering, which we talked about as patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. So when we talk about the fruits of the Spirit, we're going through the fruits of the Spirit. We're about halfway through now. And one of the fruits that we're covering today is the fruit of kindness. I want to take you to another scripture, and we're going to start to show you how kindness looks when it operates. This is going to be out of Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 13. And if you don't have your Bible, you're welcome to read with us on the screen. Let's read. Colossians 3, 12 through 13. Therefore, as the elect, that can also be translated as chosen, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long suffering. Now, in that verse, if you go on to read the next verse after that, one of the things that actually talks about, I read you verse 12, but if you go on to read verse 13, one of the things it starts talking about is about forgiving others. And it's talking about that year to forgive others as Christ forgave you. When we operate in kindness, we're putting on other things like mercy, we're putting on things like humility, that means being humble. And you're also putting on meekness, which also means humble, humility, meekness. And you're also putting on long suffering. That's patience. When we're patient with others, being patient with others is an act of operating in kindness with them. Because sometimes when people are trying to communicate with us and they're having a hard time doing so or they don't know how to do so, when we get flustered and frustrated with them, that's not showing kindness. Kindness is when we're opening the door to them with patience and we're putting on meekness. We're putting on humility or humbleness. We're putting on mercies and we're operating in kindness. I want to go ahead and read you our next scripture. This is going to be out of Proverbs 15, verse 1. So Proverbs 15, 1 it says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. I'm going to read that once more. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. When we're kind towards others with our words, when they respond to us, how we respond back usually dictates how that conversation is going to go. Whether we're talking with our spouse, our parents, whether we're talking with our children, our friends, co-workers, boss, whoever. When they say something to us, when we turn around and operate with a soft answer, it turns away wrath. In fact, oftentimes if people, you know, if you're struggling in your marriage per se, and it seems like all you guys are doing is you're bickering with each other and arguing with each other, Start working on practicing a kind or soft answer. In other words, when they answer to you, even if it's something that you would be, I guess, right about responding back at them in a harsh way, don't do that. Operate in love. Operate in kindness where you turn around and you give them a soft answer. As you give them that soft answer, that'll turn away wrath. And at the same time, if you don't do that, you're going to spur harshness and bitterness and anger coming right back at you. You will always reap what you sow. If you sow a soft answer, you'll turn away wrath and receive soft answers back. That may not mean that the next words out of their mouth are soft right to you, but if you continue to turn away harsh words with soft answers, you'll get soft answers in return. I want to read one more thing to you. This is something we've learned in the body of Christ, and I want to do some correction around this so you understand what kindness looks like. I want to take you to Proverbs chapter 25, and we're going to go verses 21 through 22. So Proverbs 25 
verse 21 through 22. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For so you will heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Now, I want to address that because in the church, that's been taught in some different ways. You know, one of the things we've taught on is that when you're kind to others, you'll heap hot coals on their head. What that means is that you don't go show kindness towards someone so that you can cause harm to them. However, when you sow kindness towards others, heaping a hot coal on their head means that it leaves them with a lasting memory that you were kind towards them. It leaves them with a lasting memory of the kindness you showed them. Even if they walk away from you angry, and even if they still talk ill of you to others, you know, if they talk bad about you to others, those acts of kindness you show towards them, those heap hot coals on their head. Because what they do is those are lasting memories that they'll remember that you were kind to them, even though they may not have been towards you because they were your enemy. One of the things I also want to tell you is that this actually goes deeper. And if we understand the context around this, when this was written and what it was talking about, in these particular times, one of the things you have to understand is that these people lived out in desert uh, habitats. And when they lived out in desert habitats, if you've ever lived in the desert, which I have and I know it's like, the desert can get pretty cold at night. You know, during the day, it's not uncommon for the desert to be very hot. But I remember when I lived in the desert out in New Mexico, there were times it would be out, you know, in the 90s or 100 during the day. But at night, it could swing all the way down to the 60s. And that's a 40 degree swing because it cooled down so much in the desert. What I will tell you is that one of the things they used to do to keep themselves warm is that what they would do is they would wrap turbans around their head. And as they would protect their head with the turban, they would take hot coals out of the fire and place them in that turban and then continue wrapping it so that those hot coals would radiate heat and it would keep them warm through the night. You know, it's been told that 80%, 60 to 80% of your body's temperature is released through your head. That's why they tell you when you're out and about and it's cold to have a hat on or something of some sort so you can keep your body temperature in. When you show kindness towards others, and what this verse is talking about is that if your enemy's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. And by doing so, you will heap hot coals on their head. What they're talking about is that you're showing the ultimate act of kindness when you place others' needs before yourself, even when they're your enemy. You know, if we can show love and kindness towards our enemies, then we can easily show it towards those who are not our enemies and who are around us as friends or maybe acquaintances. Guys, this is what it means to operate and be kind. Kindness is the act, the fruit of kindness that you display as when you learn to place others' needs before your own and when you learn to show mercy towards others no matter their situation. You're not there to judge them on who they are or what they've done. You're simply there to show kindness towards them and allow love to operate through you to let them know that there's a God and a Lord who loves them more than they've ever known, that He's accepting of them. And what I mean accepting of them is this. Let's clarify this because there's a lot of great lines in the church right now and people doing some false teachings. Jesus accepts others. That does not mean he approves of all their behaviors, but it does mean he has an unrelenting love to know them and to bring them into his presence and to have personal relationship with them by coming into their life as Lord and Savior if they'll invite him. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's study on kindness. As always, we want to remind you to swing by our website at neilreyes.com where you can check out all of our teaching resources. They're available to stream at no charge 24 hours a day. In addition to that, we also invite you to swing by our social media where you can connect with us. We have our YouTube channel, which we invite you to subscribe and share with your friends. In addition to that, we also have our Facebook page and we're on Twitter. Guys, if there's a subject you'd like to be taught on or need some clarification on, go to our website and go to the contact page. Shoot us a quick form and we will take those before the Lord and pray about them. And as we're led, we'll teach on those subjects. Guys, we want to remind you as always that Jesus is Lord and He loves you. And so do we. Thank you and have a blessed day. Drop.